Hi, I'm Ranger Donna Walsh and welcome to the Monrepo Conservation Park. Tonight you'll be given the rare opportunity to see some of the world's unique marine life up close and personal. How your experience evolves tonight is not known at this stage. Turtles are wild marine animals and work by the rules of nature, so there is no set time for nesting or hatching. The Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service is proud to help you experience such a special natural event. Our rangers, researchers and volunteers are all working hard at the moment to make your experience memorable. The Monrepo Information Centre, Conservation Park and Turtle Research Project are managed by the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service, part of the Environmental Protection Agency. We hope you enjoy your evening with us learning about threatened marine turtles. Marine turtles are magnificent creatures and have evolved little since the age of the dinosaurs. But now that humans have been added to the equation, their future is uncertain. Six of the world's seven species of marine turtles are found in Australian waters. Monrepo Beach stretches for one and a half kilometres and is Australia's best known and most accessible marine turtle rookery. On most summer nights from November to March, Monrepo Beach turns on one of nature's spectacles. The Monrepo Conservation Park becomes the nesting and hatching ground for loggerhead, flatback and green turtles. Following strict guidelines to ensure there is minimal disturbance to the turtles, visitors to Monrepo can enjoy an awe-inspiring turtle encounter. The Queensland Turtle Research Project began at Monrepo in 1968 We're under the direction of Dr Cole Limpus from the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. It soon expanded to include other important Queensland rookeries. Over the years, Monrepo has become a major reference site for world turtle biology and for the conservation of marine turtles in Australia and the South Pacific region. This research has provided great insight into the biology, migration and feeding habits of these ancient mariners. Yet, there is still much more to learn. Learning from and studying these amazing animals is the first step in ensuring their future survival. K9959. Okay, K9959. R3. R3. Okay, Sarah. This turtle here lives in Moreton Bay. Recorded on the on the Moreton Banks in that turtle rodeo. And now it's here up on this beach laying eggs. Um, it's now currently laying its fourth clutch for this season. So it's been here quite, for quite a bit this summer. And tonight, it's already been up on one of the other beaches along the coastline here, hit some rocks and went back without laying. So, one of our special turtles. Each summer night, Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service rangers, researchers or volunteers patrol the beach for signs of the small hatchlings emerging from the sand or for the large female turtles at the water's edge. This dedicated group works throughout the night recording valuable data and educating visitors about marine turtles and their conservation. Female turtles, primarily loggerheads, lumber up the beach to lay their eggs. As the female crosses the beach, she can be easily disturbed by light and movement. But once she has begun to dig the egg chamber, it is safe for visitors to carefully view events from directly behind the turtle. Each group will have a ranger or guide providing expert direction and guidelines that you will need to follow to ensure you get the best experience without disturbing the turtle. Research by Dr Cole Limpus has shown that visitor groups do not alter the behaviour of nesting or hatching turtles when managed properly. Yes, that's been a, a long, uh, slow um, evolution of, of understanding of the sea turtles. When we started, uh, we had um, um, sort of a lot of um, uh, folklore about, about sea turtles, about how uh, if you weren't careful, um, you know, walking near it, you'd scare it away, that it would drop its eggs at sea and, and all that sort of thing. And our... our um, tagging of the turtles, our careful monitoring of what's going on in terms of the various disturbance factors over the years, we've now established that uh, in fact the, the turtles are not uh, being overly disturbed by having people around them, particularly when they're laying eggs and, and uh, filling in their nest, 
and in fact uh, their behaviour uh, in terms of coming back to lay the next clutch is totally independent of whether there's some folks there uh, around them while they're laying the eggs so it, it really doesn't matter uh, for the, the turtles and as long as the eggs are um, uh, not inappropriately handled uh, the eggs will hatch, uh, we'll get um, uh, good healthy hatchlings uh, coming from them. Um, even things like uh, taking photographs while the turtles are uh, laying her eggs uh, and uh, filling in. Um, as long as the photos are, are not right up near the, the head and lots of photos into the eye, uh, it's not an issue. Photos from behind, no different than, than shining a torch over the turtle. When around a nesting turtle, take a closer look at their eyes. They look like they're crying, though they're not tears of pain. It's the turtle's way of shedding excess salt from their body through salt glands in their eyes. These tears also help to keep the eyes lubricated while she's out of the water. The turtle takes about 15 minutes to lay her eggs and during this time, rangers and researchers gather valuable data, take measurements and read tags. Loggerhead turtles will lay about four clutches of eggs during each breeding season with an average clutch size of 130 eggs. So I'm just establishing that she's uh, laid enough eggs that we can actually move up around the front of her. It's still a bit touchy, we let them lay about a dozen eggs. When all the eggs are laid, the turtle conceals and disguises her nest by packing the sand firmly over the eggs bringing it back to beach level. By the time she finishes filling in her nest, the eggs are about 40 centimetres below the surface and contained in the moist sand to protect them from the hot summer sun. Being a marine animal, she must return to the sea after preparing a safe place for the eggs to incubate. She won't be back to nurture the eggs. Instead, she invests her energy into producing a large number of eggs a strategy to overcome the amazing odds of only one in 1,000 surviving to adulthood. Successful breeding at Monrepo Conservation Park is vital for the survival of the endangered loggerhead turtle in the South Pacific Ocean region. Occasionally, a nest is laid too low on the beach and is in danger of being flooded by the high tide. Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service has implemented an egg relocation program, moving the nest to a safe location. Without relocation, these eggs would perish. And this is where you get to help. Tonight, you may have the opportunity to get your hands sandy and help save an endangered species. Through this program, an extra 30 to 40,000 hatchlings reach the water each summer. On average, eggs incubate in the sand for about eight weeks and then another spectacle takes place. Timing their dash to the water at night to avoid daytime predators and the heat of the day the tiny hatchlings find their way to the ocean by following the lowest, lightest horizon, which is generally out to sea. Hatchlings are very attracted to lights and are often disoriented by artificial lighting. That's why Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service manages Monrepo to ensure it remains a dark beach. When watching hatchlings emerging from the nest and crossing the beach, please be patient and follow the direction of your guide. Rangers guide the hatchlings by torchlight to allow easier viewing and to protect the hatchlings from the crowd. For millions of years, these vulnerable little hatchlings have been making their way down the beach to begin a life drifting with ocean currents until they take up residence in their feeding area. When the females are around 35 years old, they will once again return to the same general area where they were born to continue the cycle of life. It's a life fraught with many dangers. However, it is people's actions worldwide that continue to be the biggest danger to these magnificent marine animals. Dangers like accidental boat strikes and propeller damage to turtles, pollution of the marine environment, accidental capture of turtles in fishing nets and shark nets, and over-harvesting of turtles for food and turtle shell in Australia and overseas. 
loggerhead turtle populations in Queensland have suffered considerably with a devastating 86% drop in numbers since the mid-1970s. Dr Cole Limpus fears they may become extinct within a generation. If we don't do something positive to look after our loggerhead turtles, uh, there's a, a quite reasonable probability that we'll lose them within a generation. Uh, now that's about uh, a 30 year time span. We're actually doing lots of things at the moment. Um, the uh, Queensland Government, the Australian Government has introduced the turtle exclusion devices to the prawn trawl operations of uh, East Coast and Northern Australia and so we've removed, we hope, the, the major uh, mortality factor for our loggerheads that um, caused the, the big population crash since the 1970s. Uh, over the last um, um, about 13 year, 14 years, we've had a, a significant program to reduce fox predation of their eggs along the mainland nesting beaches and uh, as long as we can keep that running, uh, we'll, we'll produce lots of uh, good healthy female hatchlings into the, the system. Um, we've got uh, the majority of the nesting beaches are now contained within national parks and, and similar protected habitat. Imagine what Mon Repo would be like without marine turtles. No one would ever again feel the magic and the mystery of seeing such an amazing event. If we want future generations to see and experience the wonder of marine turtles, it will take all of us working together both at home and on the water. Today, these awe-inspiring marine animals really suffer from the actions of people. Simple things like discarded fishing line and boating activities have been responsible for the death of many marine turtles. But there are a few things we can all do to help these ancient mariners. Remember, don't litter. Rubbish on the land can soon become rubbish in the ocean. Out on the water, keep all rubbish, especially bait bags, discarded fishing line and cigarette butts, on your boat and dispose of them thoughtfully when you return home. Know where you are out on the water and observe any turtle and dugong go slow areas. Slow down over seagrass beds and in shallow water. If you live near a nesting beach, keep your dog under control during the nesting season and keep your outdoor lighting to a minimum. When camping on any of our magnificent sandy islands or mainland areas during the summer months, keep your campsite lights to a minimum and don't allow them to shine onto the beach. Loggerhead turtles are endangered and marine turtles worldwide are under increased pressure. It will take all of us working together to ensure their future survival. Proceeds from your entry fees assist Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service turtle conservation and community education programs. By learning more about the marine environment, marine turtles and adopting turtle friendly practices, you can make a difference. On behalf of Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monrepo experience. The Monrepo experience has been proudly brought to you by Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service and Network 10. Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service manages other endangered species and visitor centres. You may like to visit David Flay Wildlife Park on the Gold Coast, Brisbane Forest Park and Daisy Hill Koala Centre in Brisbane, or see the bilbies at Charleville. Or you could log on to our website, www.epa.qld.gov.au.